Hi, everyone. I'm so happy to have with us tonight a very special guest. And uh, Kim is going to be sharing her story a little bit more with us. But just to get us started, I wanted to read a passage out of Kim's blog, because it really, I think, tells a little bit about the determination mm -hmm. that this um, lovely lady has had. And we're going to hear about the journey that she's gone through over this past couple of years. So um, according to Kim, sometimes we don't give ourselves enough credit. Weight loss blues can be a real something. When it comes to the reflection in the mirror, loose skin, saggy boobs, um, the fear of gaining weight back. But when I see the before pictures, I'm quickly reminded of all the hard work it took to get there. Not a magic pill or a quick fix, hard work. Days of not wanting to work out, not wanting to be mindful of what I ate and drank and days of battling all of my old habits and fears. For the people that don't know how to start, I didn't either. I sat on the knowledge of the keto lifestyle for a year before I even gave it a try. But then life happens and I was fed up and just started a random day of the month. I didn't wait for the first to start and that's what gave me the drive. You have to start on the day you feel your lowest and fed up and take one day at a time. When I started this journey, it was just that, a journey, not a race with a finish line. I've struggled, I'm human, but what I never did was give up. So if someone else loses 20 pounds in a month and you lose 10, it's okay because that's your journey. That's their journey and not your journey. God made everyone their own person for a reason. Keep going, take a break if you have to, but never lose, fo lose focus on the real objective. And that is to love yourself deep with a little bit more. Again, thanks to everyone that helped check in on me. I really appreciate, and that's why I started her page, to just, tr not just to track her weight loss, but to hold herself accountable and have genuine support. So Kim, just to let you know a little bit about the crowd that's here tonight, uh, these are folks that are just like you, that are suffering different health issues. And uh, we get together on Wednesday nights, just as a mean of support. Okay, welcome. Thank you, everybody, for having me. So I've got just a few little photos to share, Kim, if that's yes, good. Yes, that's and, fine. And then I'll just let you, uh, let you chat with us and tell us a little bit more. And I think there'll be lots of questions afterward as well. Okay, so let <laughs> me share just a few little pictures. Okay. So this is Kim, Kim Dean. She also goes by hashtag sticky goes keto. <laughs> this is so wonderful. <laughs> she has an amazing Instagram page for you, those of you that are on Instagram. And she'll kind of maybe talk a little bit about her gains or losses that she's had here at the bottom. But you can see some of Kim's before and afters. Wow. So transformation is possible. Hard work, determination. And this lady is going to tell us all about it. And I want to hear about that. Okay. We'll leave that one there. A kettleball or a big ball <laughs> off your back. Okay. This is incredible. That was, that's, I, yeah, I can give you a story. All righty. So here we go. All right, everyone. So take it away, Miss Kim. Okay. So um, I would say in 2016, I had. Well, actually in 2015, I was going through like a really bad dark spot. Um, I was in like an abusive relationship and I kind of just basically lost myself as a person. Um, I didn't recognize the person that I was in the mirror anymore. My smile had faded and um, what, you know, that was already a trigger for me to even like want to find who I was just trying to get away. I finally was able to get out of the relationship I was in and that gave me the the knowledge and the drive to even try to lose weight. I started out with just like walking, um, just like, you know, little things to try and make a difference in my life when it came to trying to lose weight. I had um, seen somebody's like hashtag keto on Instagram one day and I clicked it and it took me to the real me um, website and I went on there and I started reading it and I ended up paying for like this three um the free 30 day challenge you go in there you can make a donation or you could just put zero and it would still send you the pdf and I remember reading all the information and I was like oh, I could do this but I still didn't even do it I just was just really trying to navigate 
out of that dark place that I was in. Um, I would say in 2016, I had to go to the hospital for medical reasons. Um, and at the time, I didn't have a clue what my weight was or anything. And I remember, you know, when you go for outpatient, they make you fill out the survey and it actually gives you your weight. So I remember like the last weight I could think of was like 220. So I put 220 down on the thing. And when I went into for surgery, the lady ended up weighing me and she was like, did you know that you're actually 344? I said, I'm what? And from that, like, I was so ashamed. I just, I had, was already going through the feeling of not knowing who I was, you know, looking in the mirror and, you know, um, not seeing that 344 pound person. So from that day on, I just remember feeling my lowest. And like I said, it was just in the random day of the, the month. I just took all the information that I had read and I went back and I was like, okay, I remember skimming over the 30 day, like the meal plan. And I remember like, oh, I could do this, eggs and bacon, a salad, you know, meat and a veg, like, like just, just stick to the basics. And that's all I done, to be honest. I just took the information that I was given and I stuck to the basics. I didn't get all crazy with the keto meals. You know, it's so many um, accounts out there where people's like making keto meals and things like that. But for myself, I could really say for the rest three years I just stuck to the basics my green vegetable my antioxidant fruits my you know the, the meats like I really didn't get too crazy with it and with me being so simple and repeating my meals yeah I could get boring at times but you just had just something that I really wanted for myself so I just made it work and I I can't even say that I'm bored you're still eating regular foods so that was just, that's just something, you know, how I got started. Well, again, that moment, Kim, that you had, you know, that realization that, oh, this is where I'm at, right? Like, yeah. uh, you know, just kind of having this in your face, like going into the hospital and kind of getting weighed. But, but even honestly, Kim, though, before you started that, like, you know, it sounded like the transformation began when that relationship kind of ended and that you knew that there was something more something different that you wanted yeah yes of course you know it's when you're in a situation like that you kind of can forget who you are because you're trying to navigate through the change of life right the change of now the breakup and you know becoming going back into the single route um but also when you're in an abusive relationship you know you put all the damn types of things behind you. You know, you don't really look at the weight gain that comes with it because of either the depression. People, it's not, everyone's different. I know for myself, and, um, you know, I was going through it. Some people when the stress out, they lose weight. For myself, I was gaining weight. So, um, you know, I think that alone just really gave me the drive, you know, for something that I was going through personally. That's amazing. So as you were, as you started out on this journey, you know, many people are going to hear this and you say, oh, I just keep it simple. And can it really be that simple? Because that's often the big thing that people talk about when it comes to a keto diet. Um, so what does it look like for you? You know, because this is what people ask. And I think, and I'm sure, and you can tell us about your routine, because you sure. know, I talk about that a lot, because you right, routine is key, like for life, yeah. and for health, right? Yep. So um, I would say like in the very beginning, I, the information that I took, you know, it told you about your macronutrients. So that was something that I, I right away, I got on. I said, all right, okay. I logged in on the rudeme.com. They have like a macronutrient calculator and I went in there and I filled out everything. So that gave me an understanding of how much carbs I needed to consume, how much fats, how much proteins. And then, um, I was able to download my fitness pal and I was able to, I actually paid for the actual, no, I didn't use the free trial. I actually ended up paying for it. And I just logged in my stuff each day. Um, and I would say for like the first two weeks um, in the morning, I would have eggs and bacon. Um, or I would have a boiled egg and avocado. <laughs> or, you know, I would have like, um, 
egg salad, you know, just by itself, like chopped up egg with the mayonnaise and stuff like by itself. That was what I always resorted to for breakfast. For lunch, I always stuck with the salad, you know, because for me, um, even before I was on this, you know, my journey, I was never really like a, a breakfast person. I almost like used to do intermediate fasting by default, not even on purpose, just a busy life, you know, as a mother and everything else. So um, when it came to lunch, I was trying to be more mindful of uh, eating, you know, not not eating. I it got to points where I wasn't eating. So I was like, no, you need to go eat something. So I would stick to a salad for lunch. And then for dinner, um, if anyone checks out my pages, it was always a meat and veg. And the veg would consist of either kale or broccoli or um, I would make my own cauliflower mash or, you know, spinach salads, things of that nature. I found foods that I enjoyed and I just stuck with it. So if I ate a uh, spinach salad with goat cheese every day that's what I done <laughs> and like you said it sounds like you made it pretty simple you tried to make it easy yeah yeah I made it easy because for one as um I was a you know a single mother um it was things that I needed to be able to be consistent with myself so when I'm up here making him regular foods my son where he likes the macaroni he likes the traditional Indian dishes peas and rice fried chicken you know for myself as long as I kept it simple and prepared I knew I wasn't going to be able to fall off so how did you do that so you talk about the meals but what is about the routines that you built into your day because you know I think that's it like how you manage your time because that's the biggest complaint I'm sure you yeah for how do you yes of course that? um so if we're being completely honest I used to just like um I, I can't really say I had a routine. I used to get up in the morning and throw an egg in a frying pan and, you know, do a couple of slices of bacon. You know, it was it was never I, I never could say that I meal prepped and planned for the day. Um, I think for me, the discipline came from being fed up, you know, um, just super being fed up that it was like, no, you're going to do this. Um, I would say in the first four months I kind of winged it like I really didn't have a plan but I will say like I did once I saw I dropped like the first 30 pounds I was like oh so this works and I, then I got really strict with it and really serious and started doing the meal planning and started like you know doing that nature so I would in the on a Sunday night I would um get all my vegetables and everything already. I would go to the farmer's market on a Saturday and buy all my greens and I would, you know, wash up everything. So like I said, if it was ever that, um, and I didn't necessarily like to meal prep where it was like my meals were made for the whole week because, you know, we're human. Some days we don't feel like eating that. So I didn't want anything to ever go to waste, but I did always make sure that things were prepared. So if it was the kale that I needed to chop up, the salad and all that things, they were there. But whatever day I chose, like eating a kale, I would eat a go grab it, you know, things of that nature. Um, always making sure that I had everything that I needed for my own journey on hand, whether that be the um, the sugars. So I use the um, the monk fruit. So you know that was having them things on hand for myself, you know. So I'm not having to resort to eating things that were for my son another thing that I done was I made sure that I had only things that were in the house that he liked to eat I you know it got to a point where at one point I didn't put ice cream in the house because I knew that would be a trigger for me so it was you know it, it did it didn't deprive him but if I wanted to give him ice cream I would take him to the store and take him to the ice cream parlor that way he can have ice cream but it's not in the house where it's looking at me like eat me you know <laughs> So that was some of the things that I could say, like I was able to um, do for myself when it came to preparing for, you know, that lifestyle, different things like that, not having certain stuff in the house, um, you know, not depriving myself of things. So if I wanted a bacon cheeseburger, I knew I could have the bacon cheeseburger, just don't eat the bun. 
Right. And, you know, it's amazing. And, and, but when we see your transformation, like this has been a journey, right? And it tell, us, tell us about discipline, because I know now you say it um, because you've been at this, how many, is it two and a half years, two years? It's been actually three years, three years, three and a half, three and a half years. Yeah. So talk to us about discipline. Cause I had a lady in the office today and she said, I have no motivation. I have no motivation. And I said to her, there will be days that you don't have motivation, but you get mm -hmm. up and you do it. So tell us how you maintained your discipline through like this three years and you still are. I would say my key to page, I, I could be very honest when I say I created that space. At first I didn't, I didn't, I made it private. And, you know, if I was following key to pages that I was associating with, you know, and People even just heard of me accountable. The keto community is very wide. And especially being on social media, I was able to post pictures that I would never share with my, not even my best friend, you know, because I was so ashamed of it. The very first picture I ever posted, you um, shared, that was me at my, not even my heaviest. I had already lost 20 pounds there. So I was then saying, you know what, if I'm going to do this and hold myself accountable, um, I have to create a safe space for myself. So it became like my journal. So yes, some days I didn't want to log. I didn't want to, you know, some days I didn't want to go and show up for myself. But you had people there that would hit me up and say, hey, haven't seen you today. Or, you know, um, how did you do today? You know, damn types of things really meant a lot to me. Um, if you go into like some of my posts, I really credit a lot of my discipline to certain keto people. Now, these people might not be keto no more. They, they've gained their weight back. They've even reached out to me and commended me on my, my journey on how I've stuck through it throughout the years. Um, but I could really say showing up for yourself in a way that holds you accountable will keep you motivated. Um, I, I really, I have to be frank. It's days that you don't want to show up for yourself. It's days that, because we're all human. It's, I had, like I said, I was going through a breakup. I'm a single mother. I had to navigate through life, period. Um, I was, such, I was suffering from anxiety. So that also was a space for me to be able to um, showcase and put my fears out there as well. Um, and just basically, you know, like I, I always say, show up for yourself, because if you don't show up for yourself, who will? I live by that. If you don't show up for yourself, who will? And I show up for myself every day, even if it's little by little. You know, you have to remember and understand the reason why you started. Always understand the why. Why am I doing this? You know? Your health, it has to be your main self. You have to focus on yourself. And one of the things you have to do is love yourself. And when you start to love yourself, then everything just falls into play. I'm not, I just didn't wake up one day and say, okay, I'm gonna do this. I love myself. No, I'm, I'm still on that journey. And I would always say this journey wasn't just about weight loss. It was about my mindset. It was about my mental health. And it was about me loving myself. Oh. So I, I would say that was what I had to do in order to be consistent. It's just so beautiful to hear that, Kim. Like, it's just, it's just so inspiring. It's really, um, it, I want to open the floor up, I guess now, because I could talk with you all evening and <laughs> yes. a few more points in, but is there anyone out there that has a few questions for Kim about her journey or any specifics about the keto diet, maybe that they've tried or are struggling with? Hi, everybody. I don't bite. <laughs> what about you, Bob? Oh, oh, go ahead. Go ahead, Peggy. Um, I was just curious, do you do the intermittent fasting now or do you, do you eat first yeah. thing in the morning? Or Yeah, so when I first started um, keto, I didn't have a clue what intermediate fasting was. So I would say it wasn't until like my second year I started 
this person that I used to always have dialogue with, she started fasting and I asked her, you know, what is intermediate fasting? And she was like, you know, I basically stop eating at eight o'clock in the evening and I don't eat until um, the next day at 12 o'clock. So I was like, oh, okay. So I was like, can I try that? And she was like, yeah. So she gave me an app, it's called Zero. And I downloaded the app and I basically put in um, eight o'clock for me to stop eating. And then I put in for 12 o'clock. Um, it goes over, it, it's just a little over 16 hours. And so, you, you know, you have intermediate fast to be like 18, six, 24, like that. So um, I do intermediate fast right now. I don't eat anything after eight o'clock. I also don't eat anything until two o'clock the next day. And that reason being is, is because I tried to see as how far I could go. I do drink coffee um, with MCT oil in it, and that's it. I don't do the bulletproof coffee, the butter and all that. Um, I do do the MCT oil and black coffee in the morning, um, water. Um, but I go to the gym on my lunch break. My lunch break's at one o'clock, and I tend to just, fast until after the gym and then that's when I have my first meal and that's the and the only reason why I do it that way is because I go to the gym for one o'clock if I wasn't going to the gym I'd probably eat you know at one but because I go to the gym at one I just tend to do it after I leave the gym um do you have any questions on intermediate fasting uh, well, uh, that's what I tend to do because in the morning I get up and I usually have my, I, I start with hot lemon water in the morning. And by the time I putz around and do my thing and work out, yeah, it's usually noon before I have yeah. my smoothie. And then uh, usually it's just, uh, I have supper after that. So, okay. So um, your smoothies, you know what I could be on? I never really got into smoothies. I wanted to, and I bought like a whole bunch of like blueberries, and raspberries, um, would you mind sharing what your smoothie would consist of? Sure. I, I put um, uh, celery, um, broccoli, microgreens, a half of an apple, um, some frozen spinach, um, chia seeds, flax seeds, and hemp seeds for protein and water. Okay. That, sounds, that sounds really yummy, actually. Well, see, I, I, I can't eat eggs. I have a lot of uh, food is sensitivity so it kind of limits what I can eat I can't have a lot of protein powder so I've um since I did the 21 day gut reset I've been able to add to add the hemp seeds and the uh, chia seeds and stuff back before where I wasn't able to handle those before so they're they're helping me with the protein because I get the protein in the morning and then at supper I usually just have my salad and okay. uh, meat or I usually or stir fry okay okay and then I, if I snack, it's usually fruit, which is hard because okay. my family eats eats all the crap. So I know that's, and everything that's, like that. So it's, I have it's hard a, to stay away from. But I agree. I have a ten year old, you know, so it's so much that he wants to eat. But um, I've even been creative when it comes to him and how he eats. You know, so sometimes he wants pizza. I'll make the tortilla pizza on the low carb pizzas that way he's sitting down and we're eating the same thing, you know? Um, so it's, it's I, I find for myself, the way that I was able to stick to it for so long was the way that I did it. I did it in a way that I didn't deprive myself, you know? So if I wanted, you know, we all get in the phase where we want pizza, we want um, a cheeseburger, or, you know, we, the, the, the foods that we were so used to eating, you know? Um, one of my favorite things were tacos. I would eat you out of tacos, you know? So when I learned that I can still eat tacos, but just put it on lattice or, you know, make it into a taco salad, I was good to go. I'm like, you could tell me I can eat tacos every day. <laughs> you know, um, I think the, the way that you have to do it is just to be consistent and get creative and know what works for you. You know, like you said, you have a you have a tolerance to certain foods where I could go and eat all the eggs I want, you know, so you have to, that's the main thing. It's, it's basically just finding out what works for you. Intermediate fasting, I would say, made a 
big difference. I noticed the weight was just dropping when I started fasting. And, you know, to, to the person that doesn't understand what intermediate fasting is, they was like, no, I definitely wasn't starving myself. I just knew to listen to my body. I started being able to say, okay, well, are you bored or are you hungry? Are you thirsty or are you hungry? And once I was able to navigate and understand that, no, your stomach's talking to you because you're hungry, I would go and eat. And sometimes I would even break my fast because my body's telling me you're hungry, you know? So it's not always that I would fast for the whole 16 hours. And another thing that works for me and people don't understand is that when you fast and you stop eating at eight o'clock, when you go to bed, you're fasting, like you're putting your body, so you don't even realize that you're fasting that long. And thanks for explaining that because a lot of people, they don't realize too that it's natural to go into a fasting state. We're not really, yeah. it's, you know, or it's a natural thing for our bodies to do. And another thing that people don't realize is like, once your body's in a state of ketosis, and that was what made me be able to say, oh, I'm in a state of ketosis. It was me not being hungry. You know, sometimes I had to check myself and like, you haven't eaten today, you know? So I, I would go and I would see my lunchbox. I still got my lunch in it, you know? So I'm like, oh, you haven't eaten today. But I, that was the way that I was able to say, oh, your, your, your body's burning fat. That's right. I, I love that principle, right? So if you don't eat it, you are still getting energy from somewhere else. It's mm -hmm. not that it's yes. in your body and it doesn't lower your metabolism, right? Because there's so many people that no. do that, that it, it lowers your metabolism if you fast, but it actually can, it maintains your, your metabolism. Mm -hmm. Now, Rob, we have some people, uh, Kim, that are just starting kind of on this low carb bandwagon a bit more. Okay. So, so Rob was asking me questions this week and what do you ask Rob? He said that, uh, you know, about cereal and things that, you know, understanding that everything has carbohydrates in it. Yes. So, um, I don't, I don't, I'm not sure. Is everybody local or this is everybody? Well, I'm in uh, Canada in Miramichi. Okay. So it is a brand out there called it's in my kitchen. One minute. Sorry. <laughs> this is a lady that her, knows her kitchen inside and out. You know, and so so Lacanta has a um they have a actual cereal, uh granola, and it's made up of um sunflower seeds, almonds, things of that nature, like things that you can have on keto. And I think it's a cup and a I think it's like a half a cup is like six carbs. So what I would do is I would eat that for cereal, you know, cause I mean, a lot of people like cereal. So that's one of the things that I buy as well. Um, I'm actually ran out of it. I ate the last of it <laughs> yesterday for my dinner. Um, but yeah, Lacanta has a brand, um, a cereal. So, you know, Lacanta makes the sugar and everything else now, but um, they have a granola and that's what I was eating for cereal. That's good. Costco is, Costco is carrying, um, I can't eat them because of the nuts and stuff in them, but I bought them for my daughter. Costco has a granola and they also have keto protein bars. She says they're, the protein bars are kind of dry. She says, but the granola is great. <laughs> she puts it on yogurt. Yeah, the granola that I use as well, I put it in the yogurt, like make a parfait. But um, here in Bermuda, like, you know, keto is now becoming a thing in Bermuda. Um, so you would get like a lot of the grocery stores are now just starting to bring in certain things. Um, I, if, if I, pre-pandemic, if I ever traveled, I would like pick up certain things when I was away and bring it back in my suitcase. But um, here in Bermuda, we don't we don't really have a lot of like the keto snacks, like things that are keto. But personally, and um, me, I never ate things that were labeled keto. I felt like if they had to stick keto on top of it, they were trying to market something, you know. And and another thing that I had to learn was a lot of things that said keto weren't necessarily keto. You know, um, Bermuda did this thing where they went 
in the grocery store and started sticking labels on everything that was supposed to be keto. Dr. Cannon, did you ever see that? No, I haven't. The in marketplace, like when the keto thing became popular, like for a second, um, one of the doctors, he had been on the radio and was talking about keto and how it's good for diabetes and stuff. So marketplace went in and started like sticking all these like labels on things like keto friendly. Keto, and I'm like, this isn't keto friendly. This has got, you know, hidden sugars in it. It's got sugar loads. Like that's not keto. You know, so I remember going up to one of the managers in Hamilton and I was like, hi, you know, I, I know you guys are you're trying to do a good thing, but this isn't keto. You could probably label it as low carb, but it's definitely not ketogenic. <laughs> and they was like, really? And I was like, yeah. So it was um, some of this and even Lindo's, Lindo's was starting to bring in like ketogenic products. Um things like but like they were basically low carb products but um i know they have a better selection than marketplace um you know i feel like with the grocery stores they buy things that are popular so at the time the ketogenic diet was coming to bermuda and everybody was like oh keto so and um it's, and it's good that you talk about those foods because for me as well i'm I try everything because I, I often give things out in groups and programs, but yes. I come back to the whole foods again too, right? Uh, yes. But some things, but it can sometimes be helpful to have like a rescue food, especially when people first start, right? Like yes. if you know you're going to get hungry, then have mm -hmm. some, like these things on hand. They might not yes. be your ideal, but at least they're there if you if cravings start to come. Yes. So my rescue food, um, and you would see it, a lot in my page were beef sticks, <laughs> the Atkins protein shakes, and the Atkins um, snack bars. Like that was my rescue foods. Um, especially like on some days, like um, to the the gentleman. I'm sorry, but you know, we as women sometimes when our cycles were on, like you're craving that chocolate. So for me, that was my rescue food when I was just like really craving on chocolate um the Atkins used to do like the peanut cluster bites and you know I just used to like grab one of them grab a beef stick and I'm out the door like like they were rescue foods so yes you're right it is important to have rescue foods um but as time went on I started making rescue foods mug cake is the easiest thing you can make it just make sure you have some like dark chocolate cook a pot on hand a little almond flour we all have an egg in our fridge and some butter mug cakes you can make them in 90 seconds so tell everyone doesn't know what that is i don't think tell them how easy it is <laughs> um mug cake is basically just a sponge cake that you can make in your microwave um you know for, for myself I became real mindful in keeping my carbs down to the minimum, you know. Mind you, with almond flour, it could kind of raise your carb intake. So um, I was using, like, coconut flour as well. Coconut flour has less carbs than almond flour. But mug cake became, like, the quickest thing I could make. From that, I was making, like, keto brownies. Like, <laughs> it, it, you know, it, it got to a point... because. You know, obviously, the damn types of things got expensive when you're trying to be out here buying the Atkins, the chocolate bars. But um, I I now got creative. Before, I, I really, I just used to, if I wanted a chocolate, I'll go grab an Atkins bar. And they actually sell the Lily's chocolate bars now, too, I think, at... Uh, yes, I just saw that, too. When I first started keto, all of this was, like, I would say that was, I would say anybody starting keto and Bermuda, that was the hardest because, you know, when you, when you're online, you see people eating like the, the one carb sliced bread, you're seeing them eat certain things and you're like, oh, I want to try that. But, you know, we're limited. So that was another reason why I stuck to the basics so much was because I knew it was very limited in trying to find keto snacks you know, not necessarily food, but keto snacks, things that made you want to feel like you were normal, I could see, when it came to 
Like if I went to the movies with my son, you know, I, I knew I couldn't be in there eating the popcorn. So I knew I had to take snacks with me. Um, so like I said, I would take the, I would cut up cheese and put in a bag. I would take a pepperoni stick with me, you know, things of that nature. And then, like I said, I always had the box of the Atkins chocolate bars. I knew that if I wanted that sweet, I would have them. They're like about, they're just about this big. They're just like little clusters. They look like turtles, you know? And I knew I could grab one or two of them and I could go to the movie theater and I'll be fine. Yep, having things around is key. For sure. Yes. Any other questions out there? No, oh, just when you're mentioning the bread, I was just gonna say Diet Doctor has some good recipes for the low carb bread. Yes, I've tried them. Um, Diet Doctor, they have one, but I found one that was on Wholesome Yum. She has a website. You could just put her in Google. Um, she has one that was fairly easy. It's any, I would say, four ingredients. Well, they also have the 90 second mug, mug bread too. For the yes, the mug bread's the same way that I make the mug chocolate cake. Yeah. 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 I made them a lot for the family, but yeah. Yes. And, sh you know, TikTok put me onto shuffles. So, you know, it's like I said, now that I've been doing it a little while and it's unfortunately, I can say it, it's becoming like a bad diet. Um, you know, it's becoming popular. So many people are coming out with different recipes, trying to be creative. So I would say now as I'm on keto, long term because it's a lifestyle change I've only now decided to tap into the the baking part of it I should say I remember that when we met too that you were just keeping this so simple last summer yes <laughs> yeah I, I, yeah I remember we had that talk I was like no I don't bake I, I keep it very simple but it's only like now since I've been home um, with the pandemic and everything else. And like I said, with social media, you see so many recipes. It was giving me the chance to say, all right, let me try it out. Um, but yeah, the, the 90 second mug cakes are lifesaver. <laughs> Did you have a question, Rob? Or? Oh, I just wondered if, uh, do you ever find that you, I'm trying to think of an example. So last year I went on this diet, lost 40 pounds, got real healthy was doing the same thing every day being real and then mm -hmm. at uh, Christmas time we had an office party and I decided to indulge in the big office party all the gravy all the fun stuff and uh I start I started on a downhill slope do you ever find that if you if you try certain things you find to make takes you off your path yeah of course and that goes back to being human right um this is this is literally a journey and it's a journey over mind over matter. One of the things that I never allowed to happen was beat myself up about it. If I indulged in the pizza party or the staff, you know, staff parties, I made it just that. I didn't make it a cheat day. I didn't make it a cheat week. I knew that, okay, I'm going to have this and I'm going to partake and, you know, have fun, but I'm going to leave it right here. So I knew and I left work. If I had indulged with the staff, say that we had, okay, we had a retirement party. I knew if I indulged in the cake, when I left out of there, I didn't beat myself up. I didn't go fast. I didn't, I just went home and I had my normal scheduled dinner. That's, that's a lot. Again, that's a lot of discipline. And, and in your mind though, is that, a game that goes on or from the beginning or, you know, you know, through these um, no, I, oh, mm, I wouldn't say a game. I just feel like I got, I think me being in the position where I was just fed up, you know, and the, like I said, I talk about, you know, you, you come to a place where you're scared to get bait, gain the weight back. So that's also what keep, kept me um, disciplined when it came to things like that, where I'm able to, if I'm going to have a day where I'm not eating keto, I knew I couldn't make it a whole week. 
I didn't want to undo what I had done. But it was also learning that because I ate or had a bad week, that doesn't mean that I undone the 30 pounds. I didn't go eat 30 pounds back. So, you know, so that was something that I also had to learn myself. Um, I would say that I still am challenging. You know, I still challenge with that. Learning that if I go eat a regular slice of pizza, I'm not going to go gain the 144 pounds I, you know, I gained back. Um, but it is, it is, it all does come back to being human. I, I understand what you, you know, Rob was saying when it comes to how do you navigate through that? I think for myself, it was just not wanting to navigate through that. Powerful choices, right? Yeah, I, I could really say like I was really in a space where I was just tired. Um, and when I say tired mentally, it was days where I didn't want to get out of bed. It was days I didn't, I didn't, I would say like, oh, why am I awake? Like, you know, and that was a horrible way to wake up every day, wishing that you didn't wake up. So I think when I made that decision to, show up for myself and take myself back um you know that came with it the discipline because it wasn't just a journey of weight loss it was journey of my mind my body and spirit to be honest because you know you, I got to a place where I even had lost faith in everybody yeah and so during this time Kim did you have like you did a lot of this yourself but did you have like a team around you? Like, you know, I know your fitness. I saw you with a video of once with a trainer or something like that. Yeah. Um, so once I was, once I had lost um, 60 pounds, I, so let's back back. When I first started keto for the first eight months, I didn't even walk. I didn't work out. I didn't do no physical activity. And going back, if I could change anything of my journey, that would be one thing that I would change. I would have worked out from day one only because now I'm, I'm dealing with the loose skin and everything else because of the traumatic weight loss. But that's the only thing I would say that um, I would change. But yes, I did after losing the first couple of months, um, a big significant amount of weight. I did. I had a friend that was, you know, training to be a prof um, personal trainer. He was in school and I was like, I'll be a guinea pig. You know, I just needed someone to push me to get outside, basically. And that's basically what he used to do. We would go to National Stadium. And that's so that's where you saw the um, thing where I was doing a uh, inclined plank and he had the Madison ball on my back. Um, he was basically showing me the amount of weight that I used to carry around because at that time, it was like, I'm like, this is hard. I can't do it. And he was like, I'm going to put this ball on your back. This is going to represent the weight that you lost. And I was like, and at that time, I had lost over, over 30 pounds. And that was a 30 pound Madison ball, you know? And to me, I was like, this is heavy. But he was like, imagine what you was carrying around before that. So um, he did, he, he really did push me. And when it came to fitness, um, I've always had a love hate relationship with the gyms, but with the gym, I was able to um, go and take up classes, whether that be I joined a gym at Magnum. At first, I was just working out outside at National Stadium. That's the outside arena. And then I joined a gym where I was able to just go in and do cardio. And like anybody, you don't know where to start you're sometimes trying to get in a gym where you're working around people that are already fit it could be intimidating so I picked a gym that was 24 hours and I can go and I felt like all right nobody's gonna be there so if I got up at midnight and went to the gym that's what I done or you know it it I just found I just had to find what worked for myself well, I think you've found your path and you're three years into this journey, which is incredible. So thank you. So Rob, what are, I mean, you're saying that, you know, 
you had like a downward week, but what are some ways that you don't, what did you do in order to like catch yourself? Uh, well, it wasn't a downward week. It was more, the week got me going. It actually ended up being about a downward six weeks. I, uh, okay. the week, the first week of Christmas just sort of started the whole thing going. And then I ran into some, uh, you know, personal issues where I was a little yeah. depressed at the time too. Yeah. And then it was just like, oh, well, I'll, I'll get back to it. So then mm -hmm. it was like, it was like comfort food. All of a sudden I wanted to have my sugar and cream and my coffee in the morning. And I wanted yeah. to have something sweet at night, a bag of chips. It was like all these things. So it was all these feel good things. And then yes, eventually I, I, I started realizing I felt sick after that. Like I, I had felt so good before that. And all mm -hmm. of a sudden I felt terrible and I was like, oh, what have I done to myself? Well, that's one of the, that was what I was just about to ask you. When you ate them things, how did it make you feel? Because I know navigating through my depression and my anxiety, I got to a state where I was like that as well. Um, but it also goes back to when I said that I had social media to help me as a, a platform. So people know if, if I hadn't posted my meals, I had, they would hit me up and say, Hey, where are you? And, you know, it also gave me a like, all right, it, it, you just can't snap yourself out of anxiety. You can't snap yourself out of it when you're depressed, when you're going through life and life grabs you by, you know, grabs yeah. you, you know, it's, it's, it, it does take you in a die, downward spiral. But I would always remember what it made me feel like when I was eating their own foods. I would feel sleepy right after I ate them. I would, you know, my stomach would hurt. It would be hard to go to the bathroom. And I didn't like that. You know, I didn't at all. So I knew how when I went to keto, I would feel light. You know, I would, I was regular with using the bathroom. I knew that my anxiety, to be honest, was last at peak. You know, I was able to, um, the foods that I was eating, because, you know, when you are eating sugars and things like that, it's spiking your insulin. But also, I think for myself and Dr. Cannon, I don't know if it's a real thing, but I feel like sugar does something to your brain when it comes to like depression and anxiety and things like that. Because I could only say when I was really going through it, that's when I was craving them types of things. Oh, I 100% agree with that. Yeah, the sugar definitely does something. I'm starting to think it's like uh, when I quit smoking eight years ago. Yes. That uh, have that cigarette now when when you're going through eating and you go to have mm -hmm. that sugar it's almost like that fix you want to have that mm -hmm. little bit of sugar just that little high for that second yes it's a weird thing yeah and the crash from it like it's addicting I, just like the smoking when you start i find yeah. if i do have something sweet i can't stop if it's sitting there in front of me i'm going to eat it till it's all gone so yes that's true sugar is more addictive than cocaine when they I, experiment with the rats I read that. yeah Mm -hmm. I read that. Yeah. Well, folks, it's uh, getting close to our closing time and I wanna be respectful of Kim's time as well. It's been wonderful having you here. Um, and as we kind of get ready to wrap up, Kim, are there ways that people can reach out to you or do you do any coaching yourself? Um, truthfully my life's just been you know I have people all the time that ask me do I do any coaching my life's kind of so very hectic with being a mom of a 10 year old that's into all extracurriculars that I don't necessarily do any coaching but I am an open book if you reach out to me via social media I've given people my number as well I'm so willing to help um I don't you know turn down anybody you know so many people want to know how did I do it and, you know, I'm, I'm always open. Dr. Cannon, if you ever want to do these sessions again, I would always make time for you as well. Wonderful. And I, I want to, one of these weekends, get together and do some cooking or something together too. Yes, I would like that. Yeah. <laughs> I would like that. Um, I know it's other people now in Bermuda that do the keto diet. I know they now do coaching. I believe one of the ladies now, she sells the keto meals. Um, you know, I always encourage people to cook for yourself because you know what you're feeding yourself. Um, you know, everyone's macronutrients are different, you know, so I could go make you a meal, but that doesn't necessarily that it meets your macros. It might be ketogenic, but does it work for you and your macros? 
Yeah, we've shared so much knowledge. Like I think there's people on different levels too, in terms of knowing this. Um, yes. And it is a journey and you keep learning. Like the words I hear you talk about, like even when you talk about insulin and sugar and cortisol, like you've educated yourself and this is what you need to do, right? This process doesn't come yeah. easy and you have to be, like you said, you are your number one. Health needs yeah. to be the most important thing. I feel like people, you have to understand the science behind the ketogenic diet. You know, I could go post a thousand pictures and show you what I'm eating and you could probably go mimic it, but it doesn't necessarily that you know what the ketogenic diet is. You have to understand of the state that you put your body in when you do lower your, your carbs and your sugars to such a deficit, what it does to you. Um, your, glycogen, your glycogen levels, you know, lowering so low, putting yourself in a ketogenic, because I also read that it could also harm you in a way as well, you know, if it's not done correctly. So I, my personal advice to anybody that asks me about keto would be please go read what it is to be in a ketogenic state go read what the ketogenic diet is go read what separates it from a low carb diet from uh atkins diet from the paleo diet you know go read what makes the difference because so many people be like oh you do keto so you do the low carb diet i'm like no i do the keto diet and they're like, well, that's the same thing. I'm like, no, it's not, you know? So you, it's, it's all about um, educating yourself. And I feel like once you educate yourself and you do it correctly, um, like I was explaining to Rob, like you, you don't want to feel that way anymore. You don't want to feel how your body used to run off of the carbs and the sugars. I, I have so much energy, like now. You know, I, I could keep up with my son. I could be like, okay, cool. You know, where before when I was carrying on that, all that weight, I didn't want to do anything. And that's it. And it's those emotions, like that energy that keeps us going because you feel good. And like you said, as you started feeling good, you just kept feeling good. And then it becomes easier mm -hmm. and easier because you're chasing that. You're not chasing the sugar. You're chasing yeah. that feeling. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, this is wonderful. Mm -hmm. I, I really encourage things like this. I, I thank you, Dr. Cannon, for having these group sessions because it gives people a chance to get informed. So I, I would say thank you. Well, thank you for being here. And um, <clears throat> one of the ways we close up each night is I have kind of my own little mantra. I'm sure you probably have your own little mantra as mm -hmm. well that you say. Um, but this is one that we kind of close up with so those of you that are watching or listening, so be, I'll be sure to, I'm going to post the video so everyone can see it. I'll post your details, your Instagram um, page. Yeah. Are you on Facebook as well? No, I'm not on Facebook. Um, I just have Instagram at the moment, but um, if anybody would like to reach out to me, they surely can. I could even provide you with my email or my telephone number. I don't mind. I'm an open book. You know, if... if me helping myself is going to help you, then I'm all for it. You are an angel. You really are an angel and a doll to be here. And I hope, would we say everyone, you feel a little bit more inspired by having Kim with us tonight? Oh, for sure. Great. Definitely. Thank you, everybody. Definitely. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank so, you. And thank you thank for you. sharing thank your journey you. with us. Thank you, everybody that's been here. So we'll close. Hello, Miss Debbie. Hi, Ruth. Hi. <laughs> so our final quote for tonight: I strive daily toward my higher self. I realize that my life, my health, and my weight is a journey and not a destination. I take pleasure in my daily successes. I'm resilient toward the challenges that I face along my journey, and I surround myself with supporters to help me become the better version of me. Thanks everyone for coming out tonight. Remember this group can be your accountability. And uh, thank you so much once again, Kim, for being here. Thank you, everybody. I'll be back. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Bye. you, Dr. Kenan. And I must say, can I also say this? Um, Dr. Kenan, you know, I, I stumbled upon you coming in, you know, you was taking 
fill in for my doctor. So to meet you, I felt like that was like having sent because, you know, having a doctor that encouraged the ketogenic lifestyle, um, it was different for me. When I first told doctor, my doctor about it, um, you know, she was like, oh, that's a good diet, you know, but she had never been into detail with me, like how you did. So I just say, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Let's all spread the love together. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> all right. You're welcome. Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night. Have a good week. You too as well. Bye-bye. Have a good week. Bye.